Now, elections in India have always been polarized. They're just getting worse with time. Politicians are pushing the boundaries, stooping to unforeseen lows. And it's across the spectrum, not one party. One has come to expect it, in fact, but some things really are beyond the pale. When governors favor parties, when the army is politicized, the country cannot sit and keep waiting for action. Last week, Rajasthan Governor Kalyan Singh branded himself as a BJP worker. He even rooted for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's re-election. Now, Kalyan Singh is a governor. That's a constitutional post. A governor is supposed to be neutral. A governor is not supposed to make political statements. Needless to say, Kalyan Singh was criticized today and the election commission has said it will write to the president about this incident. It said that Kalyan Singh's statement has lowered the prestige of the high office held by him. Unfortunately, Singh is not the lone offender. A couple of days ago, Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath described the Indian Army as Modi ji ki sena. He called it Modi's army. Congress ke आतंकवादियों को बिरयानी खिलाते थे और मोदी जी की सेना आतंकवादियों को गोली और गोला देती है यही अंतर है That comment has drawn angry reactions What has the election watchdog done we ask They've sought a report from the district election office in Ghaziabad. Now, seeking reports and bringing the matter to the notice of the president are all good and fine, but they sound extremely bureaucratic and slow moves in a fast-moving election story. Shouldn't there be immediate action, exemplary action in cases like these? What takes the election commission so long to act on violations? It took them nine days, nine full days, to even notice that Kalyan Singh had violated the code and they're still mulling writing a letter. They haven't written one yet. Is it sluggish or is it toothless, the Election Commission of India? Can it really punish offenders? Should it be given independent authority to act in such matters? Because these violations are becoming more frequent by the day. The last time a governor in India was found in violation of the model code of conduct was in the 1990s. The then governor of Himachal Pradesh, Gulshir Ahmed, had campaigned for his son, Sayyid Ahmed, in the Madhya Pradesh election. Gulshir was from the Congress party, so clearly no parties in the clear. And unless the model code of conduct becomes legally binding, that is enforceable by law, such violations will continue. Let me explain my point further. Do you know that the model code of con conduct has something about manifestos? What does it say about manifestos? It says that election manifestos cannot make undue promises to exert any undue influence on the voter. In other words, no freebies, no sops. That amounts to bribery. The rules say that manifestos should only indicate means to achieve promises, meaning plans. Now tell me how many political parties follow this rule and what action do they face when they break it? The answer to the both, both these questions is one, none, zero. So when we talk about election reform in India, this is where we must begin. Enforcing the law on those who want to be lawmakers.